Hey everyone, remember the uh, Z77 M Power video where I was like debating whether to delete my i7 3770K? Well, I set it to 1.35 volts and 4.5 gigahertz, and it ran that stable, no big surprise, but uh, it immediately shot up to 95 degrees on two of the cores, the others were like below 90. So, yeah, like not even my 8700K was this bad. And this thing was only drawing 125 watts from the 8-pin, that includes the iGPU VRM, while it was doing that. Uh, yeah, so this thing, <laughs> this thing needs to be deleted. I should have enough liquid metal left to liquid metal this, so that's the plan. Um, if I don't, I'm just gonna, use, I'm just gonna like... Just normal thermal paste, but we are deleting uh, this chip today using my Debauer deleting tool, uh, which I originally bought for my 8700K. But uh, I don't actually know if it's certified to work with uh, 1155 CPUs, but like, I mean, I've deleted Core 2 duos with this. As long as it fits in the tool, it's gonna work with it. So, let's do that. Also, let's like bring the uh, camera a bit closer to the action, shall we? So, so the corner. There and does it fit? It does. Okay. So then, yeah. So like Ivy Bridge is not soldered, as far as I know. The uh, soldered ones is like Sandy Bridge is soldered, as far as I know. So this thing should like pop off very quickly. Might have already been it. Yeah, it's already off. That was easy. Yeah, that's some, uh. <laughs> That's some good thermal concrete. Oh my god, this chip must have been running so hot. Look at that underfill just being like brown. That that only happens when this thing spends like a significant amount of time, like above 80 degrees. I mean that this thing was shipped to me with an Intel stock cooler on it that had like no contact whatsoever. Like it actually was loose. Uh Yeah, <laughs> this thing. This thing needs to be deleted. Okay, so... Let's get rid of the excess thermal paste. Very carefully. I'm also pleased to see that there's... Well, at least I can't see them. Uh, on 14 nanometer CPUs, there's like four smaller gold contact pads about here-ish, uh, that you need to, well, you don't need to, but you probably should cover with uh, tape if you want to liquid metal your CPU. Because if the liquid metal touches those, you're gonna have a short circuit. Okay. So it's like actually yeah, I mean, the, the the CPU is about, not just about, it's literally 10 years old, so, yeah, this is, uh, not great. <laughs> okay, so, now we need something to get rid of. Actually, there's one little last thermal paste back on there. Now it's gone. 
Then we need something to remove the old silicone. Uh, and for that, actually, like old DDR2 RAM sticks are like perfect because they're good at stripping off the silicone adhesive like this, but they're not because they're PCBs themselves. You are not really you you can't really scratch the uh, PCB like the substrate of the CPU with that. The ZHS, of course, not like, of course you can't scratch it with that. Um, but yeah, that's a sort of trick. Another thing would be like credit cards, you know, plastic. Don't don't really don't use a knife with it. Uh, I would recommend to not use knives because those will scratch your substrate and possibly ruin your CPU. should be good enough now that we can go spread a liquid metal on this. Alright, let's do the dye first. And that was way too much. That is what happens when you are not careful with liquid metal. Yeah, pressing on the tube is way easier than you think. time for the silicon seal and for that I'm actually just gonna do this the good old fashioned way of having a massive mess This goes back in here, this goes on top of it, and this goes inside. And now this goes on top of that, and presses down with a lot of force. See how this like actually bends slightly. And now we're gonna hopefully have good contact with the liquid metal and the silicone is going to squish out and make a proper seal. And we're gonna leave this for at least 25 minutes. And then we're gonna be back and collect a hopefully much cooler running 3770K. 
Alright, the CPU is now back installed in the Z77M power and it's been running Linpack for about 10 minutes and would you look at that, 81 degrees max, that is 14 degrees less than before and yeah, uh, I mean core number 2 does run a bit hotter than the rest, generally core 1 and 2 were hotter from the beginning than the other two, I suppose that's just because of where they are on the die. So core 2 might not have the best coverage, nowhere it's like consistently about 4 degrees hotter than the next hottest one. But this is still like, 81 was like its peak, you can see right now it's, you know, it, it's sometimes getting close to 80, but uh, usually spending its time a bit lower than that. So I think it's still fine, I don't think I need to redo the liquid metal application, though it doesn't have to be the best one, given that one core's a bit hotter, but it's still a lot better than 95, and, and it was also core 2 that peaked at 95 before, so that's still a 14 degree improvement. And uh, yeah, like, it did work. So my 3770K will now, well, run a lot more than 1.35 volts before it overheats. Uh, and yeah, sadly that means it's not going to do extreme overclocking because I do consider my liquid metal application somewhat permanent. But, you know, there are buckets of cheap i5-2500Ks available on eBay and I will just acquire some of those and then overclock them. But, as far as this video goes, that's going to be it and until next time, goodbye.